Ah, get off the car. Get off the rocks. Get off the rocks. Okay, we gotta figure out how to land it. It's a beautiful morning. Yo, what's up, y'all? My name is Ray Nelroy. Welcome back to my channel, Fisher Trip. We'll be back for the vlog, y'all. Check it. I'm back at the jetty. I'm back at the jetty on this beautiful, glorious day. Look at this, man. The water's clear. Now, I know if you're not from Texas, you think water being clear is like, what's the big deal? If you're from Florida, you're probably saying, clear water in Texas is a big deal, man. So let me get right to it. The goal today is to catch something edible. Edible, and I want to eat it. Now, I didn't want to do a catch and cook on the jetty. There's some regulations. I don't want to get into it right now. So I'm going to try to catch something to take it back to the crib and cook it. I want a mangrove, man. About a 15 inch, 15, 20 inch mangrove snapper, or I like to call it a mango snapper. I'll take a flounder. And I'll eat a trout, you know what I'm saying? I, ain't, I, ain't, I mean, I'll eat it. But preferably, I want a mangrove snapper, flounder, or papano. I, I caught one papano in my entire life. I don't know if any poppinos are here, but I'll take it. Personally, I think I can do it. <laughs> Enjoy the vlog, y'all. Let's go. Oh yeah, check this out, y'all. I got these at Amazon Prime. I got tired of buying ice. These are like five pound blocks. I got two of them. They're supposed to stay cold for like six to eight hours. We'll test it out. I'll let you know how it does. All right, let's talk about gear, baby. All right, so I got my pin 5000. Pair it with a pin, heavy duty rod. Got 30 pound braid. Got about a four foot fluoro leader, 20 pound fluoro leader. Got like a small one out, what is it, one out, one out hook and live shrimp. That's it, man. That's what we're doing today. Now, something else, when you come to the jetty, y'all, I don't understand why people are always cast out so damn far. Fish like structure. So while people are doing these 50 yard, 100 yard casts, the fish are literally right there within five yards from the rocks. You should not be casting five yards from the rocks, right? That's where you're gonna get your bites. I'll show you in a second. There goes the bite. Oh yeah. Did they get me? What is that? Is that a pinfish? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, oh, we got it. We got it, mangrove. There we go. Nice one. Nice one, y'all. Nice one, y'all. Yeah, there we go, y'all. Nice mangrove, AKA mango snapper. This is a good eating size, man. Exactly what I wanted to catch today. I want to try to cook these whole. Um, I'm gonna see a way if I can cut the gills out, cook them whole, scale them up, delicioso. If all goes to plan, y'all might see this at the end of the video, sitting on a bed of cilantro lime rice. Yeah! Tighten up the britches. There we go. All right, fish, I'm ready. You may bite now. You may bite now. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's a good one. Get on the boat. Get on the boat. Get on the boat, baby. That's a good one. That's a good one. Bro, they come hard, man. These mangroves, that bite is crazy. That bite is absolute crazy. All right, y'all, so we have another one. <laughs> we have another one. Bro, these boys take off like a rocket, man. I know in Florida, these boys get like 20 plus inches. I can't imagine a 20 plus inch mangrove. Yeah, them things have to be a hell of a fight. They're like pit bulls, man. Pit bulls of the sea. Let's put it in a bucket, get it moving. Let's get another one. Bench, big shrimp don't do as well, y'all. I don't know why. Oh, there we go. 
Get that 15 inch mango, big shrimp. Get that 15 inch mango, big shrimp. I'm ready. Bite it. Bite it. Bite it. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Big shrimp. Big shrimp got it. Yeah. All right, y'all. Big shrimp got it done. That's it, man. Free line it. Throw it about five yards in front of you. Nothing but a swivel of three or four foot liter fluoro. Just let it drop and let them do the rest. Simple. We're definitely getting hit. Let it drop. Personally, I never caught anything on this three ounce spoon before. Dude next to me is on. Dude next to me is on too. They're, they're doubled up right next to me, boy. They're doubled up. They're doubled up. Are we on? I think we might be on. Yep, we're on. Whoa, there we go. We got it. Okay, yep. We're on, y'all. Oh, there we go. We're on. Ah, get off the Get off the rocks. Get off the rocks. Okay. We gotta figure out how to land it. There we go. There we go. Nope, nope. Nope. Alright, gotta land it. Come on, get on the boat. Please get on the boat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Appreciate it, man. Got it? I'll get the boat. Thank you. Right here. Ah, we good. Whew. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you. He's on again. Nice one. Thank you. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go, baby. There we go. All right, y'all. There we go. Beautiful red. Let's see. I'm pretty sure she's a slot. All right, here we go. 24 inch slide red. We got us a keeper. Oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this bad boy to click it. But yeah, beautiful fish. Amazing. Hit it on the drop. Let's get her in a bucket. Try to get another one. All right, y'all. So I'm back at home and back in my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the first segment of the episode, the catch. Welcome to the second segment, the clean and cook. If you're still watching, I do appreciate it. I know I got some long videos. Y'all, my YouTube videos are like movies. You know what I'm saying? They be like 30, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour long, but you know what? People still watch them because I make them entertaining. Stick around, drop some popcorn. So yeah, man, when it comes to the red fish, man, that red fish was so unexpected. I saw other people catching reds and with the actual spoons itself, I didn't have the spoons they were throwing. I did have two, three ounce crocodile spoons. And lo and behold, the first cast, I lost one. Oh, not today, God. Don't do this today, God. I put on the second spoon, tied it up, threw it out, said a prayer, and the red was on. It was on, y'all. Shout out to the subscriber who helped me land that actual fish itself. So what am I gonna be doing with that red, man? I'm gonna do some black and red fish, and we're gonna pair it with something that I've never made before. Cilantro lime rice. That's right, cilantro lime rice, black and red fish, rice, red fish, red fish, rice. Yeah perfect harmony, right? So I think you're gonna enjoy the recipe. Let's get started. We got a lot of work to do, but we're gonna get it popping. Let go. All right, y'all, to make the cilantro lime rice, we're gonna need two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, check. We got something called basami rice. I've never heard of it, but that's what it's calling for. Um, in addition, we need one clove of garlic. We're doing minced garlic, because ain't nobody got time for that. Um, in addition, two and one fourth cups of water. Check on that. One tablespoon of salt. Culture, of course. Culture, culture. You know what I mean. Um, next we have 
one finely grated zest. So I'm going to zest one of these into the rice. Um, in addition, I need three tablespoons of lime juice, plenty of limes to go, and one cup of lightly packed chopped cilantro. Boom. So this is going to make our cilantro lime rice, leisurely. Oh yeah, as another side, um, I'm going to try some Barali Colazino Tortellini, paired up with some garlic alfredo. Um, shout out to MDR Fishing who gave me an idea about doing some noodles with this dish. But main thing, this rice, I know I'm going to get it. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to kill it. I think I can do it. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Let go. All right, y'all. So first up, I'm making the cilantro lime rice. Put your heat to about medium high somewhat. Now it says what we're going to do, allegedly, we're going to do two tablespoons of virgin olive oil. Let's see here, get my little spoon. Yeah, y'all, this, I ain't editing this out. Uh -uh, we're going we're gonna to learn together. So two tablespoons of extra, extra virgin olive oil. Why is that so hard to say? So this one, this is weird. I've never, I've never done this before. There we go. Next, put your rice directly into it. Dry rice, mind you. And we're gonna brown that. Alright. Give me a second now. So it says to start stirring as so. This looks suspect, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Definitely looks suspect. All right, so I am to heat the olive oil in a medium saucepan on medium high heat, add the raw rice and stir to coat with the olive oil. Cook stirring occasionally, stirring occasionally until the rice starts to brown. Add the garlic and cook a minute more. Okay, so I'm just coating my rice, as you can see with the extra version olive oil. Mm, it smells good, y'all. I'm so excited for fall fishing. Summer can go to hell. You know what I'm saying? 2023 summer can go straight to hell. It was literally like 100 degrees, 90 days straight. I don't know what, what was going on. El Nino, Elvira, I don't know. But summer was crazy this year. Not a fan of it. So I'm definitely looking forward to cooler weather. And I'm just gonna have more appreciation for the cooler weather. I really am, man. I'm gonna go crazy, y'all. I'm probably, I'll probably upload, <laughs> I'm not putting this out in the universe, but I'm gonna try to upload like three times a week in November. At the time of shooting this video, I have, I think roughly 8,500 subscribers. My goal is to get to 10,000 by the end of the year. Can right now get 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. But you know what's really dope? If anybody's watching this in 2024, like let's say, you know, October 2024, if I surpass 10,000 subscribers, let me know how many subs I'm at now. I'm really curious. All right, so we got our rice looking brownish. I'm gonna add my minced garlic. So I don't know how much a clove of minced garlic is, if it's already minced. So I'm gonna do a tablespoon. I mean, it could be right. Oh, that's hot. There we go. All right, after we add our minced garlic, you gotta be careful with minced garlic because it can burn easily. Cook a minute more, okay? Just turn the heat down a little bit. Mmm, that smells good. Yo, this rice is gonna be fire, I can already tell. So we'll just stir that in about a minute. Oh, this stove is hot. See that there? Yeah, there we go. All right, just about a minute. Cause like I say, you don't want to burn your garlic. All right, next up, per the recipe, I'm gonna add my water, salt, zest, then I'm gonna simmer. All right, so once again with the water, we're doing one and a half cups. No, that was one and a half cups of rice. How much water am I doing? Two and one fourth cups, okay. Here we go. We got two and one four cups of water. 
I wonder if my rice is my rice brown enough though. Mm, yeah, I think it is. Woo! <laughs> okay, okay, you cooking? You cooking? We need a little salt. How much salt we need? I need a. I think it was a tablespoon. No, a tablespoon sounds like way too much salt. A teaspoon. See, I'm about to mess up already. So that. Let's get a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon. Teaspoon. Oh, okay, that wasn't. Whoa, 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 right now, right now. I'm just realizing something. I use this was a teaspoon. I put two teaspoons of olive oil. It should have been two tablespoons. Oh my god. I could have burned my rice. Could have burned my rice. Alright, note to self right now. Know your measurements. If you can figure out a three ounce spoon to catch reds, you should be able to tell the difference between a damn teaspoon and a tablespoon. Oh my God, it's all right. All right, I wonder why it was taking so long to brown. Um, so get a teaspoon of salt. There we go, one teaspoon of salt. I mean, quite honestly, I'd rather make that mistake of not putting enough olive oil in it versus putting too much salt in it. You put too much salt, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. All right, y'all, so next up we're going to, we add water, check, salt, lime zest into the rice, bet. All right, so let me wash this off. You know, people be dirty. We're gonna do one lime zest to the mixture here. This is gonna be interesting. Mmm, this smells like popsicle, like the lime popsicle. Okay, my lime is accumulating inside of this right here. It's not good. We'll just keep going. Just don't drop the lime in the rice right now. There we go. Doing one zest. One lime zest, perfect. Stir that up, ooh, okay. It up. My rice still brown, even though I don't have enough olive oil in it. All right, so next up, what am I supposed to be doing? Hold on, y'all. Um, bring to a rolling boil. Bet. It's gonna turn our heat up a little bit. Then cover and lower the heat to maintain a very low simmer. Cool, cool. So we're gonna bring this to a, a rolling boil. So we're gonna let that simmer for 15 minutes. We'll come back with the next steps of the process with our cilantro lime rice. Um, let me go get my cutting board, my fillet knives. We got a whole raid to fillet. A whole rave to fillet. We have a whole red to fillet next. I've been out in the heat today, man. Give me, give me a break, y'all. I'm, I'm dehydrated. All right, y'all, so let's check back on our rice later. Let's get to our red. Be back. Yo! Yeah. All right, y'all, so here is the star of the show, the 24-inch red I caught. At the jetty with the three ounce spoon, as you see. Um, what I'm gonna do, honestly, is a combination of using a, an electric knife and my fillet knife because I'm smart. Man, that's pretty much it, I'm smart. We're gonna work smart, not hard on Fish and Trips channel. So let me get my fillet knife nice and there we go. Yeah, so y'all, um, we'll see how this works. I have not filleted the redfish. Man, I don't know how long it's been, honestly. When the last time? I really don't eat reds, to be honest with you. I don't eat reds, y'all. And, um, hold on, let me show focus for y'all. I just don't eat reds. Nothing against them. I think the reason I stopped eating reds is, I want to say I remember, like, filleting a red and seeing how big a redfish is, and it doesn't yield that much meat. And maybe it doesn't yield a lot of meat because I don't know how to fillet it properly. It doesn't like for something so big, you should get more meat. To me, like a 24 inch red, right, does not have as much meat on the fillets as the 21 inch flounder that I cook. But we'll see. So give me a second. So once again, y'all, I have not filleted a red. It's been a minute. I can't even remember. Do I go this way? Y'all tell me, when you fillet fish, 
do y'all go from head to stomach or from stomach to head we're gonna do stomach to head head to stomach hold on oh yeah And like I said, this electric knife just kind of protects your blade. Protect, protects your, your blade knife. Oh yeah, light work, light work, light work. All right, so what I'm gonna do or attempt to do is, move this out the way, baby. We're going to start going along the edge or the top of it here without trying to kill ourselves. Just like that. So Y'all can see y'all, I'm just going along the top of the spine with the very tip of my fillet knife. See, uh, I'm trying to think, when's the last time I filleted a redfish? It's been it hasn't been over two years since I think I filleted a redfish. Cause yeah, I don't eat reds. I love to catch them, but eat them? Eh, it's not so much. All right, let's see here. So, put my way down the spine. Give me a second, y'all. I love the sound. A knife makes a long little rib cage. Is that just me? Isn't it satisfying, y'all? Oh, hold on. All right, that timer right there was for the rice. Um, give me a second. Let's take the rice off the stove and fluff it up. I'll be right back. See, so, yeah, do y'all like redfish? I can't remember if I really like it. I love catching them though, man. Catching redfish is the funnest thing ever. Let's get about that rib cage, y'all. So I'm just working my way along the rib cage, trying to conserve meat. Okay, there you go. It's getting kind of tough. What is that right here? Hold on, I gotta break past some kind of bone. Do not cut your finger, boy. There we go. Okay, that's just the rib cage. Go by the rib cage right now. So the bull red run, I think is, is I don't know if it's officially begun, because normally the bull red run is like in October, right? Once it get a little cooler, but they've been coming out. I say today when I was out at the jetty, I probably saw probably, I don't know, 15 to 20 reds caught while I was there. You know, I was fishing off the rocks with just like live shrimp, trying to target like, you know, some mangroves, cause they're delicious. And speaking of mangroves, I got three. I don't think I'm gonna put in a video of me cooking those, but I do wanna try to cook them whole, which means that I gotta figure out how to clean them properly whole. So we'll see. Okay, as y'all see right here, look at that man, kind of missing some meat. So good though. There you go. Turn them around here. Okay, there we go right now. All right, check them for worms, no worms. Good boy, good boy. There we go. All right, so let's put them on the side. Let's see if we can yield some meat. Let me clean my cutting board. I'm kind of OCD about that, y'all. There you go. I'll be editing my video and I'll be yelling at myself. Wipe the board, Brunel. Wipe the board. It's all bloody and gucky. Wipe the board, Brunel. All right, so let's go ahead and try to get this first fillet off. Get the scale off. All right, 
Hear me out. Now, I heard a trick about, like you poke it here, right? The tail end. And if you do it like that, you should be able to put your finger in that little slit. Like that, right? You see, my finger's there. And that will allow me to be able to get a good grip on the fish. As so. There we go. You know, for me not playing a redfish in over two years, I think I'm doing a great job. There we go. All right. I'm not going to lie. Got a little meat on the bone, but we ain't worried about that. Nope. There we go. Hold on, y'all. All right. Yeah, that's a good job right now. I'm, I got to say, I'm thoroughly impressed with myself. Right? Got a little bloodline. Do we got any pin bones? Yeah, gotta get this stomach right there. Pin bones. Just gonna cut that. There we go. Checking for pin bones on it. All right, come here. Yeah, no pin bone. We good? Yeah. Has a slight bloodline. I'm be honest with you. I didn't really know what the hell a bloodline was until I started watching YouTube. My family, we didn't cut out no bloodline. We ate the fish. But since I'm watching YouTube now, they got me spoiled. So we'll just bring out that bloodline. I don't think it makes a difference, to be honest with you. There we go. First fillet. All day. Every day, baby. Every day. See, to me, like, you know, a flounder, you get four fillets from a flounder like this. We're ready, we're gonna get like two. Let's put this to the side. All right, y'all, so we'll do the same thing. Fillet the other side, get it popping. We'll check our rice. Um, the red is simple, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna get like medium high heat, throw some olive oil, some butter in the pan, season it well, a few minutes on each side and boom, Dunsky. I don't know if I'm gonna try to clean those mangoes. I think I watched some, a video from Blue Gabe cleaning a mangrove snapper, um, like you can do it whole. I've, I've attempted this once with like a, a trout years ago. It went horribly wrong, it went horribly wrong, so. Am I gonna add mangrove snapper to this video? We'll figure it out. Let me finish filleting the redfish on the other side. I'll be back and we'll get an update of what's next. You. Yeah. All right, y'all, so our cilantro lime rice is almost done. Once again, we cooked it for 15 minutes. Let it simmer. Took it off the stove and let it sit for 10 additional minutes. So next, we're just gonna fluff it up. I was worried that it didn't brown properly because I used two teaspoons of virgin olive oil instead of two tablespoons, but it looks like it's doing well. All right, so next we put three tablespoons of lime juice, all right? Next, all right. And say so next is one cup of, sorry, one cup of fresh cilantro chopped. So we're just going there. I don't want to get too deep into the stem. As long as the stem is tender, you're fine. I think one stalk should be around one cup. We're going to guesstimate. Mm, I love cilantro. Do y'all like cilantro? I know some people don't like it. So just chop it up. Yeah, that looks like about one cup. We'll take our cilantro. Bam! I don't know if you fancy with it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, all right. Oh, cramp, cramp. Dehydrate it. Dehydrate, don't do that again right now. There you go. I wanna see if I get a closer look, y'all. Mm. See, normally I don't taste test until at the end of the video. I gotta cook that red. 
I might cook those mangroves. Should I cook those mangroves in this video? Should I make this a movie? Because I want to try to cook a mango whole, but I don't know how to clean a mangrove. Anyway, let's try the cilantro rice. Just give it a taste test. Mmm. That's good. You can taste the lime, but it's not too limey. The cilantro is great with it. Mmm. The nice texture because we browned it in that virgin olive oil. We got the minced garlic in there. A little bit of salt. Bro. This is delicious. I mean, quite honestly, I can just eat this. I don't even have to eat fish. All right, y'all. So let's talk about the fish. Mm, so far. Mm. Okay. I'm sorry if it's smacking. I don't want to talk with my mouth full. Hold on. Let's talk about the fish. I got three mangroves that I want to cook whole. Even if I cook them whole, what do you do? Like deep fry them? Is that too much for one video? Like a redfish, mangrove. I was gonna cook that fettuccine tortillo, but no, nah, no, nah, this is good. This rice and fish with the cilantro is perfect, actually, by itself. All right, this is what we're gonna do. Let's see, I'm sorry, y'all can check that out. There you go. Lime cilantro rice is bomb. Delicioso. So, we're gonna go back into my fish bag. We're gonna glove back up. We're gonna attempt to clean these mangroves so I can cook them whole. I mean, essentially, you just gotta take the guts out. That's the easy part, but the part about getting the gills, I don't understand that part. So let's find out together. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be a great video, y'all. Let's go. All right, y'all, so we have our cilantro lime rice completed. I have my red fish filleted, just waiting to get blackened. And for whatever reason, I decided to go ahead and add mango snappers to this catch and cook. Y'all, I've been up since 3.30 a.m. and it's now 6.30 p.m. I've been working on this video for 15 hours, okay? 15 hours. It's gonna take me probably another five hours to edit it. And that's 20 hours of work to create this content for y'all. Hope y'all appreciate it. So yeah, man, um, what I wanna try to do is fillet, well not, not fillet, I wanna clean this mangrove whole so I can cook it whole. It's the gill part that gets me. So let's try to figure this out. I've never done this before. So we're about to do a little anatomy. Okay, so I think here, if we come up here. Okay, so I'm gonna go underneath the gill, right, right there, and come up right there. Okay, is that gonna work? Yeah, we're just exploring at this point, y'all. Okay, that's not working. Hold on, what about? <clears throat> You know, I could have went to YouTube. Oh, look, look. I see like a cartridge right here. Right, can y'all see that? Like right here? Let's go ahead and go inside of that and cut the mouth open. Or do I come, oh, no, wait. I think I just come here. We're gonna try, <laughs> we're gonna try right here. So cut that open. That's done. But how do the gills come out? Oh, man, I don't got time for this, bro. I'm tired. I'm absolutely tired. I mean, can I just pull it like a trout? Oh my God. Okay, right now, get it together, get it together, get it together, get it together. All right, y'all, so this is a lot harder than I anticipated. I don't understand how the gills are supposed to be cut. I think just, I'm just gonna cut this up here. Hold on, let's see. Cut this. There we go right now. Okay. We're gonna come back underneath here. Cut this out. Okay. Bet. Bet. All right, we're making progress, y'all. Now, I think I'm supposed to go through the anal cavity, come upwards, and just 
pull all this out? Well, one way to find out, y'all. So we're gonna go up here towards the inner cavity, go between the fins. Come on, this work, this work. Oh man, this is it's kind of graphic, y'all. It's not good though. Smell fish. Not good. All right, y'all. About to get a little graphic, okay? Apparently, you either stick your fan in here and pull out the guts this way, or you pull it out this way. Let's try to go. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Hold on, y'all. Okay, that's not working. We're gonna go the opposite way. We're gonna go in here and just start pulling out the guts. Have my gut bag here to the right. Ugh. See, this is why I wear gloves, man. I'll be sitting up all these shots with the camera. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh. Ugh. Oh, about that sound it is. Throw the guts away. Oh my God. Look at that. Gills are out. What? Is that the heart? Is that the heart? All right, we did it. I'm just gonna clean this part out, but the gills are out. That wasn't so bad right now. Come on, man, You're being all dramatic. Okay, so let me cut along the rib cage. Bloods and guts. There we go. Yeah, get this quatrus out right here. I'm just cleaning out the cavity at this point, y'all. The gills are gone, the guts are gone, all the gooey stuff that everybody might be freaking out about is gone. But I think we're good. So yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I'm just gonna rinse it out. Indeed. I don't have to score it too, so it doesn't like come up. So we're gonna do some scores on it. Like that. Same thing on the other side. Have to get the spices in. Bet. Bet. That's it, y'all. That wasn't so bad. That wasn't so bad. I figured it out on how to properly fillet or not filet, I keep saying filet, damn it. Clean out a mangrove. That's it, pretty simple. So what I'm gonna do next, honestly, off camera, we're gonna cut some of that stuff out. I gotta do the same thing I did with this one, with this one. Um, we're gonna baste it in egg, right? So we're gonna baste it in egg, okay? Then I have my flour mix here with some seasoning mixed in there and that's it. We're gonna semi deep fry it. I don't know deep fry it, but you'll see. Base with egg, throw it in here, shake it up. That's how we do it in the hood, you know what I'm saying? That's why we do it, how you cook chicken in the hood too. Shake it up, we'll get some corn oil. Boom, boom. All right, y'all, that wasn't so bad. Let me do these other two and I'll see you at the stove. We're almost done. I know, I know, I know it's been a while. I know the video is long, but I assure you, we're almost done. Yo. Yeah. All right, y'all. So I wanted to show you my assembly line, exactly what I'm talking about. If you ever fried fish, you kind of know how this goes. So once again, we'll take our mangrove, base it in nice and, this is just a couple of brown eggs, right? Get it nice and squiggly. Got it all cleaned out. Gills are out, guts are out. We'll put it in our flour mixture. You can season it whatever seasoning you find appropriate. Do a little shake and bake, Ricky Bobby. There we go, should be good. Let's go find our fish. And that's it. She is ready to go 
into the frying pan. All right, y'all, so let me do the other two and we'll be good to go. See you at the stove for real this time. You. All right, y'all, so let's get our fish in the oil and butter. This will take about five minutes tops, six minutes. Let's try not to burn down the house. All right, so what we're gonna do, got my stove nice and heated for my redfish. We're gonna do a tad bit of butter. There you go. Oh yeah. Nice and salty. Do a little olive oil if I got some left to help prevent it from burning. Okay, note the self get some more olive oil. Got our seasoned redfish. There we go. Turn up on this one. We'll just do a few minutes on each side. I got it seasoned with the Fabio Mama seasoning. Good on that. We got it. Let's see here. I'm gonna cook everything about six minutes. Now I'm kind of worried about <laughs> my um, mangrove hole. That's a, is it hot enough? Yep. Two degrees she goes. Just think, these things were just swimming, minding their business this morning, and here comes some random black dude with some cameras, taking them away from their home. Got OCD, so I, all, I want them all to be facing the same side. Medium heat. All right, bet. So we're gonna do our red fist um, about six minutes would help if I turn on the damn timer. Um, the mangrove, I'm thinking about six minutes. Now the mangrove's gonna take longer to cook so I'm cooking the whole, right? So maybe eight minutes, four minutes on each side. The red, we'll do about three minutes on each side. It's looking good, I'm not gonna lie. It's looking good. If all goes to plan, hold on, I better look. All right, so if all goes to plan in about 10 minutes, the next shot you should see will be the money shot. As we do the money shot, we get to eat. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. See you after the money shot. You. Yeah. y'all so now it's my favorite part of the episode the taste test oh, bruh, what time is it 722 3 4 5 6 7 16 hours to get to this plate it took me 16 hours 175 miles round trip to catch these fish but let's see first we'll try the red fish mm. slap yo mama that is so fire. We already tried the lime cilantro. Let's get a piece of this, a piece of this mangrove. Let's see what it look like. Got that. Ooh, look at that steam. Let's see, hold on. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. 10 out of 10. 
I did that, y'all. <laughs> I did that. Yo, if you like the video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Comment below your favorite part of the video. And also, if you're not subscribed to my channel, you need to subscribe, man. It's going down on this channel, you can see. I know that YouTube is bringing you this type of content. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and subscribe and join my family. Once again, my name is Ray Nero, AKA Fishing Trips. And it's been real. Yeah.